All right, if you work in construction, you may have heard the terms battering, benching, shielding, and shoring before. Today, we're gonna to break down what they actually mean and what they can be used for. Welcome back to Shore Safety, guys. So, battering, benching, shielding, and shoring, these are the four most common methods of supporting an excavation. But let's talk about what they actually are. So if you dig a trench, and it's at a point in which it may collapse in, which can be any sort of depth, depending on what kind of soil you're in, you may need to use one of these methods. So to break them down, battering, which is quite common, is if you're digging down, what you do while you're excavating is you build in an intentional slope or sort of ramp. So you imagine that excavation is therefore, you know, unable to actually collapse in on itself because it's on a ramp. Now in terms of angles, it could be 30 degrees, 40 degrees, it's all gonna depend on what sort of soil you're in. So it's really important to consult an engineer before you go with this method, because depending on if it's like sand or if it's, you know, rock, it's very, very different in terms of what angle you do there. The second method, now these two methods don't require any sort of additional products. Second method here is benching. So benching is when you build in steps to the excavation. So you're building in a one, two, three, four. As you go down, you're building in intentional uh, steps to the excavation. So the ratio here, it can again depend on the soil, but what is typical on a job site, maybe you know, two across for one down. So two meters of a long step and then one meter of a high step. So if you imagine this batter here, that's 90 degrees, that's zero degrees. If you're on a 30 degree angle, or sorry, a 45 degree angle, that would be a one to one step. And if you're on a 30 degree angle, that would be the equivalent of a two to one step. I hope that's not too confusing, but that's sort of how that works. Other terms for these, benching can also be called stepping, and then battering can be called sloping or ramping. So they're two common methods, guys, but one of the drawbacks of these methods is because you need to addi uh, excavate additional material, you need a lot of space on job sites. So if you're in a metro or an urban area, it can be very difficult to do these. Also, it is gonna take more time on site to do those kind of excavation methods. So the two other ways, guys, are shielding and shoring. So these are often confused as the same thing, but they are actually different. So I'll just explain because they look the same here. So shielding is when you put a shoring box in or some sort of shoring device in the ground, and instead of having it braced against the soil, there's actually a gap here. So what it's doing is it's not actually, you know, compressing against the soil and compacting it. It's just shielding from any debris falling down and collapsing in. So what it's gonna do here is it's gonna catch a cave-in instead of actually prevent a cave-in. Now shoring, the difference between shielding and shoring is for it to technically be shoring, this fill or material in here has to be intentionally braced up against the box. So there's kind of two ways you can do it. You can either put fill in there so it's very, very hard, compacted and braced against the box, or you can use hydraulic struts. So if these shoring struts here were to brace outwards, in terms of they would you know, extend outwards, that would actually compact the soil. And what that does is that actually helps prevent a collapse instead of just catching against a collapse if it happens. So guys, they're the four most common excavation support methods that we see. We can help you with any of these. Obviously, always consult an engineer because it's gonna depend on ground, it's gonna depend on is there a building nearby, is there a 50 ton digger next to the excavation, that can impact it. Make sure you give us a call, guys. We can help out with all of these and follow along for more sure safety tips and tricks.